Okay, we're still on springs. And remember what, uh, what we were saying in the beginning of this uh, section, 8.6, is that we want to see how springs are related to contact forces. Okay, so I want you to still try to keep that connection. Okay, so now let's look at something called stiffness. Now, say now we have a soft spring, a stiff spring, and a pole, okay, like a post. Then if you put the same brick on all those three, uh, the springs, uh, the two springs and the post, um, so we have the same force being applied downwards on uh, each of these three. Then we can see for the soft spring, obviously, as we would expect, there is a, a larger deformation. The stiff spring, a smaller deformation. I don't even know if they've... Of course, there's a deformation. Okay. Uh, so you put the brick on there and the brick moves down. And then for the post, that is, that is even stiffer. It looks like it hasn't even deformed. Similarly, if you stretch them, if you, if you hang these, um, these three from the ceiling, uh, you'll see the similar thing. The softer the spring, um, the more you have the deformation. The stiffer the spring, like this is a rope, okay? So, um, you have a rope that if you pull on the rope, it hardly, hardly deforms. In the same way that if you compress this post, it hardly deforms. If you pull on a rope, it hardly deforms. However, so, so this is the concept of stiffness. You can apply the same force to these three members, but due to this, the stiffness, which you'll see later, is given by K, which is your spring constant. Um, uh, based on the stiffness, you have different types of deformation. Now, you may think that something like a rope or something like a post doesn't deform, but it does actually deform. Okay, and um, its de its deformation is just very very small. However, this is the point. Let me see if I can find this point over here. Um, so the more you load, the more load you pile on top of a solid object the more it compresses in order to generate the force necessary to support its load. So the point that we're trying to make here is that all objects that experience contact forces behave like this. They have to have some kind of compression, okay, if, you, if, if this is the scenario, like if you're sitting on your chair, if you're standing on the floor, if you're, if you're pushing against the wall, there has to be some kind of compression in order to generate the force necessary to support the load. Everything around you behaves this way. The chair, your bed, the floor, the road. Okay. So, um, so for example, a soft chair that you're sitting on behaves like a soft spring. A hard chair that you're sitting on behaves like a stiff spring. Okay, stiff spring or even something like that. Even a concrete floor must compress. It must compress in order to support you. So, so I hope you can see this. I hope you can keep this with you for, uh, for, for like forever. That any time that you press against something, even if, if, even if it's concrete or steel, there has to be some kind of compression so that it can... Um, create a support load okay it's similar for stretched objects so we've got compress compression uh, being applied and also stretch so objects that are stretched like a rope um, a rope is also very stiff however it has to stretch ever so so slightly in order to provide a support force okay Okay, so I think you're getting the idea. And then as, as long as these forces are, sorry, as long as the compression or the stretch is reversible, back to its original length, it is called an elastic force. Okay.